in this movie, we're going to have a look at drum kit designer and tweak some of the sounds. So I have drum kit designer set up here on an instrument track. And like all of the instruments in Logic, it has a number of different presets you can choose here. And I'm just going with the default kit. Sounds pretty good so far. But for any of the kit pieces, you can actually do some tweaking and fine tune them and get them to sound just the way you want. I'm going to start with the kick here. If you click on it, you can see that you can choose a number of different kicks to start with. So this is the default kick for this particular kit. And if I click here, it not only chooses that kick, it plays a note so I can hear it. And there's another one. It's deeper. It's got a little more punch to it. Of course, I can still play on my keyboard controller if I want to hear a little more about what it sounds like. Like so. For any of the kicks you choose, I like this one, for example. You can come over here and you can see you can retune it. You can dampen it and you can turn it up or down. So let's start with tuning. It's down... Uh, a good bit already. I can detune it further for bigger, wider sound or tune it up a bit for a smaller, tighter kind of kick. I'm going to take it back roughly where it was. Dampening will stop the kick from vibrating at the end of every kick strike. It's going to just dampen down the sound a bit. So here I'm going to increase the damping a little more. And a little more. So you've got a number of different timbres for this kick. A big loose kind of sound or a very tight, almost muffled sound. And anything in between. And of course you can turn it up or down. For the snare, you have the same kind of options here. So I'm going to start by choosing a snare drum. This is the default we have for this kit. We have this one. Or perhaps this one. So these are a little looser. You hear more of the snare sounds here. I actually like this one the best. Again, I can tune it so I can deepen it a bit. A little more thump to the bottom. Or have almost kind of a piccolo snare. I think I'll go this way. It's already got a bit of damping, so I can take that away a little looser, or I can dampen it some more. It's my kit so far. And you can do the same with the cymbals. So these are the crash cymbals here. This is the left one. This is the right one. And there are MIDI notes to play them. That's left. That's right. And you can do some changes here as well. For example, maybe I want the left crash to be a little higher in pitch. You can even get it to feel like a splash. And then again, maybe it rings too long, so I'll dampen it a bit. Or too much, depending on what you want. The same with the hi-hat and the ride cymbals. Here's the hi-hat. Maybe I want it to be a little bigger, a little deeper. Maybe dampen it just a bit. I like that. And the ride symbol over here. Again, maybe make it just a bit bigger. See if I can get it to ring just a little less. Like so. Now with this instrument, there's some additional parameters here. If you click on this disclosure triangle, you can see that there's a shaker, tambourine, claps, cowbell, and sticks sounds as well. And you can find those on the MIDI keyboard, and you can turn them up or down. So here, for example, there's the tambourine. Maybe we'll bring that up a bit. And the cowbell, maybe we'll bring it down a little bit, like so. There's also a parameter called input mapping, and all that does is determines when you play a MIDI note, which kit piece in the drum kit will you hear. It's set to general MIDI, which is a standard that was defined back in the 90s that defined the C1 note in MIDI will play the kick, the D1 note will play the snare, and like so. It's typically what you see commonly implemented even today. 
There's also a choice to go with the V-Drum standard, which is a Roland standard for their V-Drum drum kits. And in the middle, it says GM and Mod Wheel Controls Hi-Hat Opening Level. And what this means is that you can play the hi-hat, and as you increase controller one, which is Mod Wheel, it crossfades from a closed hi-hat to an open hi-hat. And I'm just modulating the sound of the hi-hat by working the modulation wheel on my keyboard controller, and I get different kinds of hi-hat sounds. And it's actually pretty realistic. It's a pretty effective way to create real sounding drum parts. So these are some of the parameters that you can explore changing on Drum Kit Designer.